Welcome to this PRL on single-stranded DNA repair mechanisms. We'll cover the steps of three different single-stranded DNA repair mechanisms, and we'll learn about the types of damage that each mechanism repairs. The three repair mechanisms that will be covered are nucleotide excision repair, mismatch repair, and base excision repair. I'll also point out how cancer predisposition syndromes relate to inherited deficits in these pathways. However, know that the objective of this PRL is not to teach about these syndromes in depth, so you will need to use other resources to learn more about them. DNA is represented in the same manner throughout this PRL. The dark teal line combined with the light green boxes represents the sugar phosphate backbone. Specifically, the light green boxes represent the sugar molecules. The three prime end is represented by the arrow head, while the five prime end is represented by the arrow tail. The letters represent the bases. The double helix is ignored for the sake of simplicity. Let's move on now to look at nucleotide excision repair. Nucleotide excision repair recognizes three primary DNA errors or lesions. First, bulky adducts, which are attached to the bases. An adduct is just a complex formed when a chemical binds to a biological molecule. Next, regions of mismatched or damaged bases. These are more than one base. And finally, thymine dimers, which are also called pyrimidine dimers. These are covalently linked adjacent thymine bases. If the thymine dimer is not recognized and repaired during the next round of DNA replication, it may be read as a single base, and that may result in a frame shift mutation. An important feature to note is that both bulky adducts and thymine dimers distort the structure of the DNA molecule. This is important because there are two pathways of nucleotide excision repair. These pathways differ only in how DNA damage is recognized. Specifically, one pathway is initiated by proteins that recognize distortions of the DNA double helix. All of the subsequent repair steps in both pathways are the same. Let's now take a look at the agents that cause these DNA distorting forms of damage. An important cause of bulky adducts are polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. This is a big name, but it simply describes the basic structure of a group of over 100 chemicals that are released from the burning of organic materials such as coal and wood. They can be released also from broiled meat, and they constitute some of the main carcinogens from cigarette smoke. Another cause of bulky adducts is aflatoxin. Aflatoxin is a carcinogen produced by certain types of the aspergillus mold. This mold grows on rotting corn and rotting legumes like peanuts. Children are particularly susceptible to aflatoxin, which leads to stunted growth into liver toxicity. From the therapeutic perspective, certain chemotherapeutic agents like cisplatin are utilized for their ability to induce bulky DNA addicts in cancer cells. Thymine dimers have one primary but very important causative agent, UV light. UV light can cause covalent bonding between two neighboring thymine bases. Let's turn now to the steps of nucleotide excision repair. DNA distorting damage is recognized by a protein dimer called XPC-RAD23B. XPC stands for Xeroderma Pigmentosum Complementation Group. We'll get to the significance of that in just a second. The presence of XPC-RAD23B results in additional proteins being recruited to the site of damage. These proteins serve various functions like ensuring that the site is truly damaged and in need of repair. Let's pause here for a clinical correlation. Xeroderma pigmentosum, an autosomal recessive condition that causes a significant predisposition to skin cancers, results from a genetic mutation coding for one of the seven XP proteins involved in nucleotide excision repair. These proteins are named XPA, XPB, and so forth through XPG. Even the absence of one of these proteins is sufficient to cause a dangerous defect in the repair of ultraviolet light damage to DNA. Returning now to the mechanism of nucleotide excision repair, a helicase binds to the damaged DNA strand and separates the strands in a three to five direction. Endonucleases then cleave the damaged strand at the three prime and five prime ends bordering the damaged area. The region of excision in nucleotide excision repair is typically 25 to 30 base pairs long. Finally, 
DNA polymerases use the intact strand as a template for resynthesizing the region of excised DNA. DNA ligase closes the NICs. Let's move on now to mismatch repair. Mismatch repair recognizes single mismatched bases as well as small insertions and small deletions. Single base pair mismatches are often the result of DNA polymerase making an error then failing to proofread and correct that error. There are various causes of small insertions and small deletions, but one in particular is very important with regard to cancer. Let's take a look at that now. Microsatellite instability is a condition of high susceptibility to genetic errors that results from the mismatch repair mechanism failing to correct replication mistakes in error-prone regions of DNA called microsatellites. Microsatellites are repeating nucleotide sequences that are a normal part of the genome. The sequence itself consists of two to five nucleotides, which typically repeats between five and 50 times. An example of a microsatellite is illustrated here. Microsatellites are significant because these regions of DNA are susceptible to a phenomenon called slippage, which occurs during DNA replication and results in small insertions and deletions. Let's take a look at how this might happen. In the first instance, imagine that during S phase of the cell cycle, DNA polymerase is synthesizing a new strand from a template strand. The template strand has slipped, creating the loop you see here. DNA polymerase fails to replicate the small sequence that slipped. The consequence is a small deletion and the newly synthesized strand. This deletion will be propagated when DNA replicates again, unless the mistake is caught by the mismatch repair mechanism. An insertion results when the slippage occurs in the strand that is being synthesized. This loop will result in more nucleotides in this strand than there should be. Again, this is an error that will be propagated continuously unless caught by the mismatch repair mechanism. Without a functioning mismatch repair mechanism, a cell is susceptible to microsatellite instability, where numerous replication errors accumulate because of slippage in the microsatellite regions and failure of recognition and repair by the mismatch repair mechanism. Let's move on now to the steps of mismatch repair using the example of a single mismatched base. The proteins that are named are important to be familiar with. First, the MSH2 and MSH6 proteins bind together. This MSH2-MSH6 heterodimer binds to the DNA at the site of the mismatch. Once bound to DNA, the MSH2-MSH6 complex recruits a different heterodimer, this one composed of MLH1 and PMS2. Let's pause here to check out a clinical correlation. Lynch syndrome, also known as hereditary non-polyposis colorectal cancer, is an autosomal dominant condition that predisposes patients to several types of cancer, but particularly colon and endometrial cancer. A defect in any of the mismatch repair proteins, MSH2, MSH6, MLH1, or PMS2, can lead to microsatellite instability in an affected cell and eventually to the development of cancer. It's important to note that in the majority of cases, these deficient proteins result from a somatic mutation, one that is not heritable. In fact, microsatellite instability accounts for approximately 15% of all sporadic colon cancers. But when the defect is a germline mutation, patients have a heritable genetic defect in one of the four mismatch repair proteins. This is Lynch syndrome. Patients with this heritable defect have a significantly increased risk of early onset colon and endometrial cancers. Let's now finish reviewing the mechanism of mismatch repair. Once combined, the four protein complex of MSH2, MSH6, MLH1, and PMS2 recruits XO1 and exonuclease. XO1, along with the MLH1 PMS2 heterodimer, nicks the DNA strand containing the mismatched base and the affected region is removed. Finally, DNA polymerases use the intact strand as a template for resynthesizing the region of excised DNA. DNA ligase closes the NICs.
The final single-stranded repair mechanism that we'll look at is base excision repair. Base excision repair carries out much of the day-to-day -day repair of the genome, including the repair of DNA damage that results simply from spontaneous DNA decay, but also from environmental chemicals and radiation. The types of damage repaired by base excision repair include deamination, which is the removal of an amino group, methylation, the addition of a methyl group, and oxidation. Note that these forms of DNA damage do not distort the DNA double helix. Left unrepaired, deamination, methylation, and oxidation can result in incorrect base pairing during later rounds of replication. Let's take a look at the steps of base excision repair. First, DNA glycosylase identifies the damaged base, breaking the hydrogen bonds between paired bases so that the damaged base flips out. Let's pause here to talk about DNA glycosylases. DNA glycosylases are enzymes that demonstrate specificity with regard to the damage that they recognize. There are a number of different glycosylases, and each one recognizes only a small number of similar base lesions. There is also redundancy in the base excision repair mechanism, which is to say that any given damaged base is generally recognized by more than one glycosylase, as shown here. You don't need to memorize the names of any of these glycosylases or their specificities. These are just a few examples to demonstrate the principles of specificity and redundancy. Let's return to the steps of base excision repair. After DNA glycosylase removes the flipped out abnormal base, it leaves behind a base site that lacks its base. This is called an AP site with the AP signifying apurinic or apyridemic. Next, AP endonuclease cleaves the phosphodiester bond 5' prime to the AP site, while AP lyase cleaves the phosphodiester bond 3' prime to the AP site. This allows for removal of that piece of DNA backbone. Next, polymerase beta replaces the excised nucleotide. And finally, DNA ligase closes the nix. This concludes the PRL on single-stranded DNA repair mechanisms. We covered nucleotide excision repair, mismatch repair, and finally, base excision repair. This PRL did not cover direct repair, which you should review on your own. The double-stranded repair mechanisms are covered in a separate PRL.